I personally think that one of the keys to being your most productive, getting more done, having more freedom in your time to get more done or do the things you wanna do, is to make sure that you have a solid system in place for actually time batching or calendar blocking or planning out your tasks or whatever you're doing with your schedule. So today I wanna to take you through how I organize my calendar, how I use both ClickUp and my Google Calendar to kind of make everything work the way that my brain needs it. So hopefully it will inspire you to come up with a system that works for you because I'm a big believer in doing what works for you, but also, I do think sometimes we need to see what works for other people before we know what works for us. Hey, howdy, hey, y'all, and welcome back to my channel. I am so freaking pumped that you are here. If we don't know each other, hi, what's up? I'm Jessica Stansberry, and this is my internet home. And if you're looking for time batching, productivity, goal setting, and all the things that are gonna help you work less and live more while you make more money, this is the channel for you, so make sure you stick around. A couple of things. So I'm using this new lavalier mic plugged into my thingy on my camera, so hopefully it sounds okay. I haven't really tested it. Second of all, it is a partly cloudy day, and if you have ever filmed videos, you know what a woe it is to film on a partly cloudy day because it's dark and then the clouds will move and it's brighter. So hopefully my camera does a good job of adjusting to that okay and it's not too distracting. So before we really get into what I do and how I block off my calendar. I'm literally gonna show you how I do it in any given week or day or whatever. But before we get into that, I just wanna kind of like give you permission <laughs> to understand that you need to do what works for you. You don't have to do what works for this person or this person or me or that person or your dad or your brother or your sister's mom's friend. You do not have to do what works for anybody else. And you have all kinds of tools at your disposal to kind of figure out what works best for you. So if something doesn't work for you, ditch it and do something else. And you'll notice as I talk about my system that there's a couple of things that I know that just don't work for me that other people who teach and preach productivity and all the things would tell you are the way to do it. And Y'all should know by now, if you've been around for a while, that I don't do anything the way anybody else thinks I should do it. So do whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be the same thing I do. It doesn't have to be the same thing this person does. You've got to figure out a system that works for you. And like I said a second ago, we have so many tools at our fingertips now that you should be able to easily find a system and a strategy and a process that works for you. I mean, we have digital calendars like Google Calendar. We have project management systems like Trello and ClickUp. Here comes the sun. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then we also have things like digital planners and iPads that we can write on and all this stuff, right? As well as, you know, old school paper calendars, which are totally fine to use as well. So I personally use Google Calendar and ClickUp, like I said a minute ago. It is just the system that I have found that works best for me. And here is also where you're gonna hear about things that I do that might be different or whatever. And that is, I don't like to look at my calendar and feel like my days are totally full. So when a lot of people talk to you about time batching or calendar blocking or whatever the situation is, they're gonna be like, put it on your calendar and put all your tasks in these like work blocks. And I time block and I love it. But for me to say, oh, I'm gonna put every task that I have on my Google Calendar literally makes me want to break out in hives. I feel like it's just too much and I don't wanna open my calendar and see that every single day. So what I do is I go through my calendar and I will block off the times each day that I have to work. So for me, it's really important that I put in my personal things first. So the times I'm gonna work out, the times that I have appointments or my kids have appointments or um, I want to be off for whatever reason, I put all of that in the calendar first. I also color code my calendar. And so I have multiple calendars inside my Google Calendar. 
calendar. So you'll see here that I have like a time blocking calendar. I have a tasks calendar. I have a kid's schedule calendar. I have a client calls calendar. Um, and I have just a standard calendar calendar. And essentially what I do is this standard calendar is where everything kind of dumps into my calendar. So, so right here on this, you'll see that I have a podcast interview with Gillian Perkins. If any of you watch her channel, I have a podcast interview with her on the 13th of April from 1215 to 1:30. That just goes on my generic calendar because this generic calendar is what I have programmed into things like Calendly, or other like booking softwares so that if I need to book calls with someone else, then the calendar automatically picks up that I have an appointment at that time. Client calls and calendar both feed in to my like Calendly booking stuff. So for me personally, I don't book a lot of things through Calendly. Really the only thing would be if someone booked a strategy session with me, which I don't offer those a ton. If you wanted to book one, you're welcome to. You can just email us. Like those obviously I will book with something like Calendly. And in the month of April, I'm starting a second podcast where I am going to be having in-person guests in my studio in town. And so these in-person guests will come in and we'll do in-person podcast interviews for a second podcast. You'll hear more about that later. And if you wanna know more, definitely make sure you're on my email list or you know, follow me on social. But those kinds of things, like I, I need a system in place where my assistant can be like, okay, you are officially approved to be on the podcast. Here is our booking link. And that booking link automatically knows where else in the day I have calls and where I can't take on another call. So my client calls and calendar are where everything like that goes. So anyway, for me, client calls and calendar are the two things that feed into like Calendly or some kind of booking service. So those are where all my time specific things go. So any client calls where I'm committed to someone else, I have promised to show up at a certain time. That's where those kind of go in. So, you know, any kind of podcast interviews I've agreed to be on, um, like Gillian's or like this, uh, digital marketing talks is like a Facebook live. I think that I agreed to be on of someone else's those go in those calendars because that is what works best for me again. Do what works for you. But I do have it color coded in my brand colors and my pinks and my oranges and my purple and teal and I do have orange, it's just not on this calendar yet. But what I do is I come into Google Calendar and once everything is on there that is a personal appointment or a time specific appointment, then I will go through and see what each day looks like and where I plan to work within the day. So if we're looking at this week in April, I almost always have a work block from 6.15 to 8.30. And essentially, if you've watched my morning routine video, that is where I bust through a bunch of admin tasks. I just feel my best at that point to do admin task type stuff. And then after that, I'm almost always going to squeeze in a workout. So what I will usually do is I will come into my calendar and I will just put it on my like calendar so that it is blocked off for the week as well. Workout, whoops, workout plus get ready. And again, depending on the week, it could be that this workout and my like getting ready time happens during that work block, like that early work block, or um, it could be that it happens later in the day. It really just depends on what I have going on. So today, for instance, as I'm filming this, it's April 1st. Instead of having that work block this morning, I actually didn't have that time because I have had to take my kids to school all week this week because my husband has been out of town and he's normally the one that has that duty. So um, like this morning, I got ready and, and got ready for the day and I haven't worked out yet. So my workout would be later today, right? But looking at this week, we're using as an example, workout and get ready um, is really, it looks like it's fine to happen from like 8.30 to 10 every single morning this week um, and I can I can change the color on that so if I want my workouts to be like lavender or whatever they totally can be and then they can also still be on that calendar that's gonna be blocked off in Calendly so I'm gonna go ahead and make that be like my workout and get ready time every single day this week when I hit save here it's now gonna auto populate that I am working out and getting ready from 830 to 10 every single day this week Again, that's not always the case. So then what I'll do is if there's anything that's like day specific 
and I know that like those days that's going to happen or that day that's going to happen, I have probably already put it on my calendar. So for instance, I already have it repeating every Tuesday and Friday that I'm going to be in the studio. So every Tuesday and Friday, I'm going to be in my studio in town. Um, and that way I know like when I'm blocking off work tasks that that is going to happen. Now that will change in the summer once my kids are out of school or, you know, could change going forward. But for now I know that. And so I have that up here. Um, things like tax day has just been put in by Google, <laughs> which is always fun. But things like my merch launch that's happening on April 16th, I have known what day the merch launch is happening for a while. And so it's on my calendar because that's something that when I'm planning my week, I need to know that, that that is happening. And speaking of a merch launch, oh my gosh, let's chat about today's sponsor, Spreadshop. So if you've been hanging out with me for any amount of time, you know that I have been wanting to do merch for like years, but to honestly add in some kind of like fulfillment or really even the design and operation of a merch shop just felt too daunting because I don't have the time to do that personally. And my team as it is right now doesn't really even have the time to do that either. So when Spreadshop reached out to be a sponsor of this channel, I said heck to the yes. And let me tell you how freaking easy this merch setup process has been. I mean, I'm not joking when I tell you that it was like 20,000 times easier than I expected it to be. And now when my merch launches in a few days from when you're seeing this video, it's gonna be seamlessly set up in a way where my channel will have those like little buttons below the videos where you can like buy a t-shirt or buy a mug or buy whatever is gonna be available and I can add to it and take away from it. And um, I don't have to handle any of the fulfillment. Like I don't have to worry about what's in stock, what's not. They have quality, quality products. I can't wait to show you more about the merch in that merch launch video, which is gonna happen on April 16th if you are watching this in real time. But everything's like rock star quality. They manage it all for me. And it was so flippin' easy to set up. It is a no brainer. So if you are also a YouTuber or someone with an online brand in any type of way and, and you wanna add an income stream by offering merch, and, but you're like me and you're like, I really don't have time to deal with this. I don't want to deal with inventory. I don't want to deal with whatever, but I also want really good quality. Spreadshop is for you. I have put a link below in the description for you to check out Spreadshop. It does integrate with YouTube's merch shelf. So you can link up your products below your videos and all the fun stuff. And you don't have to have a certain amount of subscribers or followers to do this. You can do this from the very beginning. And honestly, if I would have known that this kind of option was out there, I probably would have done this way before now. So Spreadshop is amazing. Thank you for sponsoring this video. The link is below for you to check them out and definitely stay tuned for a bonus video that is dropping on April 16th to tell you all about my new merch line. All right. So now that, now that you know about my merch line, let's get back to this, this here calendar. Like I say, my merch launch is happening on April 16th. I need to know that on my calendar so that when I go to plan out my week or plan out my day or like whatever I'm doing, I know that that is happening. And so, you know, maybe I need to have a break in time where I am um, going live on YouTube or where I am monitoring the comments a little bit more because a video has dropped or I am, you know, getting on Instagram stories and being like, Hey, I launched merch or like whatever. So anything like pivotal, exciting, big, major that is happening on a certain day, I always just throw it in my calendar as like an all day task so that I know when I'm looking ahead. So for instance, today, as I'm recording this, again, it's April 1st and my episode on the social media marketing podcast with Social Media Examiner went live and that was a big deal for me. That's a podcast I've wanted to be on for years. So when I was on my podcast interview with Mike Stelzner and he was like, hey, this is gonna go live April 1st, I literally put it in my calendar so that I would remember that that was happening and not have to rely on the fact that they were going to send me graphics or whatever. Okay, so we've made it a little bit through my day, right? <laughs> so work block one is always pretty well going to be the same for me unless there's something happening that week or I need to be ready quicker than like 10 o'clock or whatever. And then, like I say, this week I am working out and getting ready every day that week from 8.30 to 10.00. 
And then what I do is I go through and I look at the the like rest of the time I have available each day. So for me on here on this Monday, I'm going to have um, another available block to work from 10 a.m all the way until like 2.45 because I have to go get my kids from school at 2.45, okay? So I want this to go on my time blocking calendar. So it's yellow, so I see that as like a block of time I can work, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save there. Now you'll see down here that like my kids appointments, like we have baseball practice, soccer practice, um, an orthodontist appointment, things like that are in blue. I don't use blue for anything else, but my, my kids stuff or like family specific things. So they're gonna be on there and I'm gonna work around those, okay? So when I look, so that's Monday. That's got me for Monday. My work day pretty well ends at 2.45 when I go get my kids from school because I go into mom mode. But that's also why I work a little bit in the mornings to you know make sure I'm getting everything done I need to get done. Now I look at this calendar for Tuesday and I say, okay, I have a block here from 10 to 11, but I have to drive to my studio and I will have to set up the podcasting like station in my studio. So I'm really not even gonna consider this a time block. Same thing with like in between this one and this one and in between this one and this one. Now this actual interview will be over at 2.30 and since I'll be in my studio, I need a little extra time to get to my kids' school. So pretty well Tuesday is completely blocked out for me. I will have this one work block from 6.15 to 8.30. If this was a really, really busy week for me, I might take advantage of the fact that I can work out once I bring my kids home. And I would, I might move this workout to the afternoon so I could work a bit more this morning. So it really just depends for me for this week. I'm just going to leave it. It's not like I need an extra hour on that Tuesday to work. It's totally fine. Wednesdays are interesting for me because my kids are home and um, because they're back in school full-time, but full-time is technically only four days a week right now. And so on Wednesdays, they're home and they have schoolwork to do. And this particular Wednesday, it looks like we have an orthodontist appointment I have to go to, and it takes us about an hour to drive there and an hour to drive back. So when I'm looking at this, if I have to leave an hour before this appointment, I could have a little bit of time here. And I probably will because then that's when the kids can get their schoolwork done as well. They can be school working from 8.30 to 11 when we would have to leave to go to this appointment. So essentially I would have like an hour of work time if I leave my workout and getting ready here to work before we have to leave to go to this orthodontist appointment. And then again, I, you know, if he's at the orthodontist for 30 minutes and it takes us an hour to drive home, if we don't make any stops, which is not likely, um, we're probably gonna stop at the grocery store or to get food at McDonald's or something like that. And so basically when I look at this, my whole Wednesday is gone as well. <laughs> so, um, and that's okay. You know, I, I know that this is gonna happen cause I'm also a mom, like I'm not just a business owner. And so, um, you know, if I wanna take advantage of this 10 to 11 a.m. time frame here, I will go ahead and block that out and say that is a time blocked time as well. And we'll just do work block two here. And I name my things like work block one, work block two, work block three, whatever, how many ever the day has because then it's easy for me in my brain to say, okay, these tasks can fit in work block one, work block two. And I'll show you how I determine that here in just a second. Essentially, that's kind of how it works. So Thursday, I'm gonna have a work block from 10 a.m. to 2.45, same thing with Friday. So while Tuesday, I am getting a lot done because I have interviews and things that are part of my job. I'm not getting, I don't have a lot of like work time and that's okay. And Wednesday, same thing. I mean, I still have like three hours and 15 minutes on Wednesday to work, even though most of the day is gonna be eaten up with driving to this orthodontist appointment or whatever. But I block everything out like that. And so everything that's yellow, I know is available time for me to work and everything that's blue, I know is kid stuff, everything that's either purple or like a orangey pink um, is you know time specific things that have to happen for me. And then my workout and getting ready, I sometimes change colors on that because I like the way it looks in my calendar. But this is the way my week starts. So I do this either the Friday before the next week or on Sunday evening before the week starts. I go ahead and block out my week based on what I've committed to already. These work block one 
t uh, blocks are generally reserved for admin tasks. I am not, my voice is not awake enough and I am not awake enough or ready enough to film videos or even do podcast work during this time. So these have to be things like writing emails, catching up with my team, answering any questions that they had from the day before that I might've missed, you know, setting up things in ClickUp. Sometimes it's even video editing. It really just kind of depends on the day, but then I reserve any kind of filming, podcasting, things that are gonna take a little bit longer for these longer work blocks throughout the week. Okay, but this is the real magic of time blocking and like how I organize my calendar and make sure I'm gonna hit goals and not just do things because I think that's what 99% of us do is like we're just doing tasks and they're not actually like helping us move forward with anything. So it's not enough to just know when you have time to work because if you don't know what you're working on during those time blocks, you're kind of like working on things that don't matter or you're sitting there like, well, what am I supposed to do now? You know, like what am I supposed to be working on? The third scenario is that, you know, if you run like a client-based business or something like that, that you're working on their stuff all the time and you're never working on your own business, which is key regardless of what type of business you own. Okay, so what I do is at the beginning of every quarter, I'll pull up my master plan board in ClickUp. So what you're looking at right now is my ClickUp system. And ClickUp is what I use for my entire business to manage everything, to make sure everything happens the way it's supposed to happen, all the things. I will pull up this board and at the beginning of every quarter, plan, or you know, a few weeks before the beginning of every quarter, plan out the big things that are gonna happen throughout that quarter. So if I'm looking at Q2, and I know that's April, May, and June, right? February, March, April. Uh, January, February, March, yeah, April, May, and June, then I'm gonna say, okay, what do I want to happen in April, May, and June? Now, I have figured out what I want to happen in April, May, and June because I know what my income goals are for the year or what is happening for the year. So, for instance, if I know in June that I am going to be launching some kind of big program and I'm gonna put a lot into it, I'm gonna plan it all out, and like that's a big thing I'm doing in June, then I'm gonna go ahead and map that out here in my master plan calendar. But I've already like plopped things into this master plan the year before, like at the start of the year, because I know like, oh, well I have this goal and this is how it's gonna break down. So what then happens is that I go through and I look at the quarter and I say, okay, um, April, May, and June, here's what's happening. What needs to happen to make these things happen? So, you know, let's say again in June that I'm launching some kind of big program. And I know that to launch this big program, I need a big push to my email list. I need to run ads. I need to develop the program. I need to do this. I need to do that. Like I have this like whole list, right, of things that need to happen for me to do that. And so then those become tasks that need to be done through the quarter right? And then I break those down into which week they need to get done. So in my master plan, generally what happens is everything is kind of reverse engineered. For the quarter, I go and I say, this is what needs to happen by this date. And these are the tasks that need to happen. And I give them a due date of somewhere in that quarter. And so when I'm looking at my weekly tasks, to know what to put on my to-do list to go in those work blocks that we just blocked out in Google Calendar, I come into my work plan and I see what tasks I have a due date of that week or the week before or the week after, or like whatever I need to be working on. I would say, okay, those things definitely need to get done or delegated or whatever. So they'll be added to my to-do list for the week but then also any kind of admin tasks that happen on a rolling basis. So like, you know, oh, this person needs something for me before they can continue that task. I don't wanna be a bottleneck in my business. So, okay, this person needs something for me. This needs to happen. I need to map out this thing. I need to return that email. I need to, like whatever, right? All of those types of things go on my to-do list. So that's two things that are going on the to-do list. Things from the master plan and things that are like rolling admin tasks. And then there's also usually things that happen every single week. So rolling tasks that are gonna happen every week, like film videos, 
record podcast episodes. So essentially then what I do is I will go into this weekly view here on my team's like weekly view. And we have it broken out by like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So every single week I start a new card in ClickUp that says Jessica's to do, Jessica's tasks. Sometimes it just says my name. Depends on to how tired I am. And I just start dumping the to-dos in there. So it's like, I need to, we're refinancing our house. I need to fill out the refinance application. I need to film two YouTube videos. This is part of that task for this week. Um, share about my social media examiner episode. So you'll see here that there are multiple things on my to-do list still left to do for this week that I'm currently in. But this is what happens and what I do is I just dump. So I'm, I'm going in here and I'm saying, okay, I need to do that thing that was on my master plan. Da, 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 da. I need to do that thing that was on, that Laura asked me about last week. Da, 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 da. I need to do X, Y, or Z. Da, 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 da. I need to film videos, podcast episodes. I just kind of dump it all in a to-do list and I just dump. That's what I do first. I don't think about what day it's gonna happen. I don't think about anything like that. I just dump it. Then what I do is I look at my list and I kind of see like what things are similar tasks. What, where are there like tasks that can go together? So for instance, if I'm filming videos and you know, I'm filming YouTube videos, but I also need to film like a welcome video for a course or something like that, then, you know, those things are very similar. I have to have makeup on and my hair fixed and be in front of a camera. It's a very, very similar task. Then, you know, maybe I'm writing emails to my email list or redoing like a nurture sequence or whatever. Those are similar tasks. Maybe I have three podcast episodes I need to film that week. Those are similar tasks. So once I've kind of said, okay, these things are together, these things are blah, blah, blah. Generally what I do is I figure out where the things that are gonna take the most time need to go based on that Google Calendar again. So I'll switch back to my Google Calendar and I'll see I have a big work block on Monday, a big work block on Thursday, and a big work block on Friday. And again, I didn't map that out here while we were on the video, but work blocks three times this week where I have about four and a half hours to get some things done. So if I need to film a bunch of videos, it's, it needs to go in one of these big work blocks. If I'm going to record a bunch of podcast episodes, it needs to go in one of these big work blocks where things like write a single email or um, you know do admin tasks can go in these shorter work blocks. So that's kind of how I look at it. So if I'm looking at my calendar or my to-do list and I'm like, oh, I need to film six modules of a course um, that last week I mapped out all of the modules and got all the slides done, but this week I need to film them, that might even take two of my big long work blocks this week. So maybe I do that on Monday and Thursday. And I know nothing but like admin tasks are really gonna go on Tuesday because I really don't have any availability after like 8.30. Which by the way, once you get a system down for this, this really doesn't take that long. It's kind of just knowing like what's happening when. So once I have like my to-do list done here in ClickUp, I will go through, I have statuses set up as you can see here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so I will go into each of these tasks or subtask that ClickUp calls them, and I will assign them to a day. So I will assign, fill out the refinancing app to Wednesday. I will assign, film two YouTube videos to Thursday. I will assign, share about the social media examiner episode to Thursday, because I saw it on my calendar when I was planning out the week. I will assign, film amendment to YouTube Rockstars to Thursday, because I'm already makeup ready filming these videos. Um, I actually did this refinancing app yesterday. So then what happens is every single day, I don't question what I have to work on. Again, remember that I'm not adding these tasks to my work blocks or to my Google Calendar because then I would have tasks literally everywhere and it would make my eye twitch, you know? So I don't do that. I am just gonna say, okay, I know these things are gonna be done, these things, these things, these things on each day based on the time I have available and what I need to get done, right? So I just assign it to the day. So for instance here, plan out the one-time offer for my ClickUp course, plan out most productive week ever, an evergreen sales funnel. Um, I have written here WB1, which stands for work block one. Those are tasks I can do in those early morning hours that I don't need makeup on for or whatever. So that's how I'll generally like designate what needs to be done. So when I stumble in here in my sleepy stupor 
At 6.15 after doing my morning routine, I don't even have to think. I just know, okay, it's Thursday. I need to do the things on work block one or whatever, okay? So that is how I time block and that's how I reverse engineer my goals to make sure they're actually getting done. When you have a course launching in three months and you reverse engineer it to you know the weeks that are prior to that or whatever, it is so easy to get it done. It doesn't feel hard. It doesn't feel like something that is too bananas. And I think it is so key and, and again, something that so many people miss that we actually know what we're working on during each time we have to work and why we're doing it. Like, if I know I'm working on writing an email, why am I doing that? How is that moving the needle forward? I'm a big believer in moving the needle forward and making sure that our tasks that we're doing are actually gonna help us in our business in some way or help us in our life in some way. I'm also a big believer in fitting my business into my life and not the other way around. That's why I'm, when my kids are home, my schedule changes. When we have appointments, when I want to work out, I am literally planning that first because then the work can be worked around around it. And another thing is I always have the goal of either getting everything done early each day or getting everything done before Friday and having a really, really light Friday. That is always my goal. And what that does is not only does it allow me to have a light Friday here or there and have shorter work days and like whatever, it also gives me some padding. So if I wake up with like a really massive headache and I'm just like not in the space to create or do the thing that was on my to-do list, I have room to move it. I think that's also when we get in trouble is when we like plan out our week so stringently and so um, you know, closed off that like if something happens, we can't move things around. Hopefully that was really helpful. Hopefully you were able to see how you can reverse engineer your goals, turn those into to-dos, turn those into blocks of time on your calendar without overwhelming yourself. It should never be overwhelming everything you have to do. I almost always in the week being like, huh, I literally ran out of things to do. And that's because I don't want to overwhelm myself. That also can help you see where you can take on more things or you need to offload some things from your calendar or your to-do list. So it might take a little while to kind of get in the rhythm of this, but once you do, I think it will be really, really powerful for you. And again, use whatever system works for you. If you need to do this in your paper planner, in your digital planner, in Trello, in Asana and not ClickUp, Although y'all click up is life changing, but if you need to do it in these other programs, it's totally fine. That is completely up to you and, and we have to do what works for our brain or we won't do it. So because I know certain things about the way my brain works, I plan in that way. If I figure out something else that is not ideal for me or is ideal, I will work that into my plan. All right, so I'd love to hear how you plan your week or where you're struggling to get more done or in how to increase your productivity because I'd love to bring you more tips and tricks and show you behind the scenes just like this, but I need to know what you need, you know? So go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the link for Spreadshop in the description below and stay tuned for my merch launch announcement in the next video if you're watching this live. And until next time, bye y'all.